we move on. So we talk about uh, Lorentz transformation. So here, uh, Lorentz transformation is uh, different from what we uh, have learned before. And actually, I think you will be more familiar with the Galilean transformation. It is something like um, if this is a stationary um, uh, reference frame, we call it S, and if there is another uh, moving moving uh, reference frame S bar with uh, uh, velocity t, uh, v, which will make um, x prime equals x minus v t and t prime equals t. So this is called the absolute time. Uh, and um, if we just need to convert the x axis for S reference frame and S prime reference frame, we only need to uh, subtract the, the velocity of this reference frame and multiply by the t. So this is um, what we have learned before. And um, in this case, uh, when you need to add the distance, you just Algebraic add, add them together, and the speed you also algebraically add, add them together. However, for here, the Lorentz transformation can uh, have a little bit different. Uh, actually, the settings is still the same. S is a so called a stationary reference frame, and S pi is an other inertial reference frame. Uh, actually, there are two reference frames, but between these two inertial reference frames, they have a relative motion. V, uh, v is the velocity between them. So uh, the conversion between them is a bit different. We have a gamma factor here. And actually, they have not have a y and z axis uh, velocity. So for y axis and z axis, actually they are the same, but if you have a y axis um, velocity, then you, you also need to apply the gamma x, gamma y, and gamma z, and so on. But here we, we just assume uh, the, exact, uh, the, the, the reference frame is moved uh, along the, the x axis. Also, the time is not absolute uh, as we can expect because uh, we have time dilation for um, moving less than frame so that uh, no matter, uh, not only you need to multiply the gamma factor here it also need to subtract this term vx over z square here I can show a little bit why it will look like this. Why it will look like this? I I'm not trying to tell you how to really derive it because I'm I'm not really sure how how, how we can derive it. Uh, it's it's just only show you how you can um how you you can know it. It is reasonable. So according to the second postulate of the relativity, we know that the speed for different reference frames should be um, should be constant, which means that um, uh, we can take uh, when t and t prime equal to zero, uh, they are at the same point, so that we can write that this term equals to this term. Suppose when we um, uh, choose the um, reference frame uh, wisely because uh, we, we don't just uh, move it uh, um, 
at some distance, it it doesn't really change. The 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 key here is the relative uh, velocity between the two inertial reference frames. So we can just uh, choose the same original point at the t and t prime equals to zero. Then this for this dot, you can imagine that. Um, when you need to calculate the speed of light, it will be uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And take the square root over the time, then it is the uh, speed of light. And in the reference frame S prime, you can also calculate the speed of light like x prime squared plus y prime squared plus z prime squared over t prime. And the two C should be the same, so that uh, so that uh, you can uh, just multiply it by uh, t t and then take the square on both sides, and then you just uh, move all the stuff to the left hand side. Then you have a C square T square minus all this stuff, and actually for that equation, this is equal to zero because you choose the uh, original point of the. Uh, uh, reference frame uh, uh, wisely. So for the S prime reference frame, you can also get C square T prime square minus X prime square minus uh, Y prime square minus, minus uh, C prime square. So these two terms should be the same because you have a, a constant uh, speed of light in uh, different inertial reference frames. So we try to substitute this stuff into there. And as we know, uh, y prime equals uh, y and z prime equals z, so that uh, we can just ignore these two pair. Then we will know that uh, So for the for the for the right hand side, uh, for the right hand side, it is actually c squared t prime square minus x prime square, and we substitute t prime t prime, which is this one, so that it will become c squared gamma square t minus uh, x over c square square and minus x prime will be equals to gamma square x minus uh, b t square right so we can factor gamma square out gamma square then we will have uh, so we express expand them we will get c square t square for the first term and minus uh, okay two two t v x T B X, uh, and uh, actually C square and this and this C square is cancelled, and finally we have a uh, B square, B square X square over C square, because uh, this C square will become a C to the fourth power in the denominator, and this will cancel with a uh, C square here, so only c square on the denominator is left and we try to minus x square plus 2x vt minus b square t square something like this so we will find that 
this one and this one cancel. And we have uh, b squared minus b squared. So uh, let us try to group this term. Uh, maybe you can use another color. Green. This one and this one we group together. Then we can factor t squared out. And actually, uh, gamma square, gamma square, we can calculate it like this. Gamma, gamma square equals to 1 over 1 minus v square over z square, right? Without the square, this is 1 over square root of, of that term. Then uh, it will be nothing but c square minus v square. Uh, and c square on the top. So we have gamma square like this. So the gamma square can be written like this, c square minus v square. And for that true term, we have a c square minus v square multiply t square. And the other two term, this one and this one. This is so uh, we can factor x square and c square. Um, let me see. B square minus c square. We can factor x square over c square out. Then for the, for the first term, we will have v squared. For the second term, because it only have uh, x squared there, so that we need to multiply c squared to it. So that c squared multiply x squared over c squared is x squared. So we can actually cancel this one, this one, and this one. But here we, we need to have a minus one, minus one, and minus one here. So then we can cancel this term, this term, and this minus one, this minus one. So finally, we will have a c square t square minus x square c square. And finally, we have a c squared t squared minus x squared. And this is the, this term. So we finally prove that it satisfies this equation. Is nothing but some algebraic calculations. But um, how do we really prove it? It should be like this, and <laughs> it will be quite difficult. And actually, it is called uh, here, it is called the uh, Minkowski space. And he is actually a Russian or I'm not really sure. Yeah, this this guy proposed by this guy. Mm, well, well, you can see something similar here. Transformation and symmetry. And this is the well known the, uh, the cone, the cone, the light cone. Guangzhou. 
So here, we know that the Lorentz transformation should be like this. And, um, and this table is for the Lorentz transformation for um, pairs of events, which means that there may be uh, two events occur, occur, uh, occurs at uh, maybe here and there. So with the two um, reference frame, they may measure uh, uh, x1, x2, and x1 pi, x2 prime for the different uh, reference frame. And you can also measure uh, t1, t2, t1 prime, t2 prime for the two reference frame. So if you only need to know the difference, that, which means the distance between the two events and the time difference for the two events, you will have a delta x, delta t for the reference frame S and delta x prime, delta t prime for the S prime reference frame. So the conversion between them should be look like this. Should be look like this. Actually, it is not so uh, difficult because you just need this, uh, you write it as x, x1 prime equals gamma x1 minus v t1 and x2 prime equals gamma x2 minus v t2 and then you subtract them then it will become this one, one prime. And likewise, uh, you can get a uh, one like this. And for this one, you make it one, two, uh, one, one, two, two, and then you subtract them, then you get two and two prime here. And actually, for this uh, transformation, it really implies the uh, time dilation and the length contraction in it. Which means that uh, when we pick when we pick uh, equation two equation two here equation two um, so if we pick this one and we and we let delta x prime equals to zero, then uh, it will reduce to this delta t equals gamma delta t prime. And in this case, delta t, delta t is the delta t in the time dilation, and delta t prime, delta t prime is the proper time delta t zero. So then you can have a delta t equals gamma delta t zero for this case if you choose uh, x prime to be uh, delta x prime to be zero. So this is the which means this one in price the time dilation. Uh, or it means you can forgot the time dilation, the length contraction, which I taught in the last hour, and then you use this Lorentz transformation, and then you you can repeat all the example in the previous section because uh, when you take x prime equal to zero, which means that which means that you only have uh, one point at that reference frame. And then for, for that one, for, uh, for S prime, it is not really moving. So that, you, so that the P, uh, so that that time should be the, so that this time should be the proper time. 
because at this random frame, the two events occur at the same position. And that should be the, 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 the proper time you measure. And delta t, delta t is occurring at this reference frame, and it is actually moving. So that this one, when you pick x prime to be zero, this one is the proper time, this one is the delta t, when, when you consider the time dilation. So this is something tricky here. And if you consider one prime, one prime, which means delta t equals to zero, delta t equals to zero, and then uh, delta t equals to zero, which means that at this reference frame, at the same time, at the same time, then the two events at that time should be the proper length, proper length, right? Because this one is not moving with respect to the event. So at the same time, so that one should be the proper time. So for this case, if you choose delta t to be zero, then this one should be Delta x prime, this one should be the proper time. This one should be the proper time, which means that uh, this one should be the proper time, which means that um, T equals to zero. Delta T equals to zero. That one should be the proper time. And uh, sorry, that one should be the proper length because the two event is moving with that uh, reference frame. Mm, can check here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when this means that when the delta x can be identified as the length of the rod in the frame S only if the coordinate of rod and point are measured simultaneously. Okay, so they need to measure uh, simultaneously to become the, the 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 proper length to become the proper length. So when delta t equals to zero, delta x prime should be the proper length and delta x is not the proper length so the the length at uh, s reference frame should be uh, should, should be contract and in this case we, if we put uh, delta d equals to zero delta x prime equals to l zero and delta x equals to l then we will have the length contraction. A length contraction formula. Which means uh, which means that the Lorentz transformation really implies the the, the time dilation and length contraction and actually this is a, a more general case for for that. So here is an example so that you can uh, have a better understanding. So an Earth starship has been sent to check an uh, Earth outpost. So it's a Qian Shaozhan, Qian Shaozhan on the planet. 
whose moon houses a battle group of orphan uh, hostile uh, reptilian reptilian. So it's a uh, as the ship follows a straight line cross first past the planet and then past the moon, it detects a high energy microwave burst uh, the moon base and then 1.1 second later. Uh, an, ex an explosion at the Earth outpost. 所以他就看到那个前哨站爆炸了，然后他看到他用一个时光打打他，就是一个microwave Four times ten to eight meter from the from the base uh, from the ship's weapon spring. Uh, so the reptilian have obviously uh, attacked the Earth uh, outpost, and so the starship began to prepare a confrontation. Uh, uh, the ship of the, the speed of the ship relative to the planet and the moon is uh, 0 0.98 c. What are the distance and time between the burst and the explosion as measured in the planet of the moon frame uh, to the occupants of the station? Which means that uh, uh, the guy is on the ship, uh, which uh, which is leaving leaving the planet and the moon, and he feels that. There are some um, bursts, which means that uh, some of the ship try to attack the outpost, and then 1.1 second later, uh, he find that the outpost explode. So he asks you, what is the speed of the? Uh, no, no, the speed. The speed is given. So he asks you what are the distance and time interval between the bursts as measured in the plane moon flame. Because this one, this this time and this distance is measured on S reference frame. So it asks you X prime and T prime, uh, delta T prime. So 1.1, 1.1 second is uh, delta t is delta t if we uh, assume s is the reference frame uh, of the ship although you will realize uh, the ship is moving and the moon and the planet doesn't move but uh, here we we just assume that uh, s is the ship so it will look like the moon and the planet move away from the ship with a relative uh, velocity v. So in this question, we know that uh, v is 0 0.98 z, and also delta x is uh, 4 times 10 to 8, 4 times 10 to 8. So we can just substitute all the stuff into the Lorentz transform to, uh, to get the to get so here uh, we can also write that um, which is delta t can be uh, regarded as the t uh, t for the expo explosion minus the t of the microwave burst, right? Because uh, the microwave burst first, and then the explosion occurred later, and so as the so as the 
this is xe minus xb. This is xe minus xb. So we can write delta x prime equals uh, gamma delta x minus vt. And we know that gamma is uh, 1 over square root of 1 minus v over c. C squared. So you substitute V equals to 0 0.98 C gamma would be 5.025. So it will be 5.025 delta x is 4 times 10 to a meter minus uh, 0 0.98. C C times delta T is uh, one point one second, three point one second. So we'll find that uh, three point eight six times ten to eight meter. So which means uh, at the moon panel reference frame, uh, you will feel like the distance is uh, 3.86 uh, 3 times 10 to 8 meter, which is a bit different from the guy on the, of the Sasha field. And actually for delta T prime, delta T prime, which is gamma delta T minus V delta X over C squared. So we substitute all the stuff. Five point oh two five one point one minus zero point Zero point nine eight c c square. This is four times ten to eight. So finally, we will get delta t to be minus one point oh four second. So this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Which means that. What is the meaning of the minus sign in the value for delta t prime? So, originally we write that delta t equals t e minus t b. So, delta delta t prime equals delta t uh, b prime minus delta t. Uh, no e prime of minus b prime. Uh, no de no delta no delta here. T e over d b prime equals equals minus one point oh four oh four second. Which means that on the moon planet reference frame, the explosion occurred first and the burst occurred later. Actually, the explosion occurred first. So did the burst cause the explosion or vice versa? So this is no, this is no. Because if, uh, 
if two events have uh, have causal uh, causality relationship, then uh, with in different uh, inertial reference frame, they should uh, observe the same order of the. Uh, it's not just the same order, no matter what is the relative speed of the initial resonance frame. If one, uh, if there are two event A and B, and in reference frame one, he he observed that or uh, event A occur occur first, and in an other reference frame he uh, he find that event B occurs first. That means A and B doesn't have a casualty, which means that A doesn't cause B or B doesn't cause A because if A occurs uh, needs to uh, event B as a result, which means that uh, uh, just for example, if I just uh, shoot a gun to the rubbish bin, then the, the bullet cannot go faster than the speed of light. Then, then no matter how you observe, if I shoot a gun, uh, shoot the gun, and then you you feel the rubbish bin uh, was 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 shot, then in different versions, then you find that uh, my uh, the gun was shot first. However, however, in here we can find that actually for one of the reference frame, the distance is um, four times ten to eight, and the time is uh, one point one second, which means that the information should pass through this speed, which is faster than the speed of light, so that uh, so that the burst uh, is not possible to cause the explosion for the for the outpost. And this is a joke. This is uh, that is they are unrelated events. Thus, the starship should stand down and not confront the reptilians. So simultaneity is a um, very tricky concept, but uh, at least the casualty should should be uh, uh, should be conserved for different reference frame. Uh, 